Black raspberry jelly is one of the easiest and most delicious fruit jellies I've ever had in my life. I absolutely love this jelly. I'm gonna make it today and I'm gonna share how I do it. I'm making black raspberry jelly today and I'm gonna share how I do it and it is absolutely delicious. I had never had black raspberry jelly until I married my husband. His family's from Indiana and they uh, grow it there and they make it there all the time. But here in the South, I had never heard of it. And when I first tasted it, I fell absolutely in love with it. And my father-in-law showed me how to make it years ago. What I start with is the black raspberries. I've tried to grow them here. I do have black raspberries growing, but I never get a very good yield out of them. I just get, you know, just a really small amount. It's not enough to do jelly with. I brought plants from Indiana and planted them here uh, about 12 years ago. They grow, but they don't thrive. And I feel like it might be our climate here, North Carolina, Southeast Coast, Zone 8A. I order frozen black raspberries. I get them from a company out of Michigan that ship them frozen. They're organically grown. They are shipped in a frozen container. But the last time I got them, I was really busy and I didn't have time to use them as fresh. So I dehydrated all of those berries. I put them in the food saver bags and just saved them until I could get to it. So now I'm ready to do my jelly. So first what I had to do, which I did off camera, is I reconstituted those berries to get the amounts that I needed. So to make this jelly, I'm going to start with three cups of the prepared berry juice, five cups of sugar, a quarter cup of lemon juice, and one pouch of Serto, it's backwards, the Serto, uh, the Sure Gel liquid pectin. There's two in a box and it's a six ounce pouch, so it's going to be one pouch. If you're going to work with fresh berries, then you're gonna to need to boil those down and strain them out. I will show you what I use to strain mine because all recommendations are to strain through cheesecloth. And that's because uh, raspberries of any kind have tiny, tiny little seeds and it's very hard to strain those out. I'm not a fan of cheesecloth and that's because Every brand of cheesecloth I have ever bought, you have these little fuzzies that come out of them, and I don't like the idea of that fuzzy stuff uh, from the material getting into my food products, so I rarely will use cheesecloth. But what I have found that works good is this little strainer right here, and it's what I did today to prepare my berry juice. This is just a coffee strainer it fits down in your um, coffee maker, but the mesh on it is so fine, nothing is going to get through. So when I have to strain the berries or anything else that is really fine, I always use this. You can only put but so much in there, you know, and wait for it to go through, but it is well worth a fine mesh strainer. And I use this because it's what I have in the house and I've not found anything better that, that will work. So what I have already done off camera because it's a little time consuming was processing my berries, which I had to reconstitute because I had dehydrated them. And I, what I did was I soaked them for about an hour in water and then strained them all to get my just pure straight juice. So now I have my three cups of juice already in the pot. I'm gonna turn this around so that you can see what I'm doing. So I have already got my three cups of berry juice in here. 
a half teaspoon of butter. And that is because um, the juice will foam up a lot and the butter prevents, well, it reduces the foaming. It's not gonna prevent it all together, but it will reduce it. To the juice and butter, I have added a quarter cup of lemon juice. Now it was just lemon juice out of a bottle, but it was straight lemon juice. So a quarter cup of lemon juice is in here. Now I'm gonna add my sugar, which is five cups of sugar. And I have already pre-measured this as well. And I'm going to just dump this in here. And I'm gonna bring this to a rolling boil that cannot be stirred down. And you um, really need to stir it constantly to keep it from sticking or scalding. So I'm just gonna keep it stirred until it comes to a rolling boil that I cannot stir down. And then I'm gonna add my package of liquid pectin. And this will make six cups, which will equal six eight ounce jars, the jelly jars. Once it comes to the rolling boil, then I'm going to count one minute, a solid minute of a rolling boil. I'm now at the full rolling boil, so I set my timer on the stove for one minute. Steam is hot. So the boil cannot be stirred down. Okay, now that one minute has ended and I'm going to set it for one more minute after I add this pectin. Not until I can get it all squeezed out. All right. That steam is so hot. If there's a lot of foam, when I take it off the stove, I've got this little, it's a mini um, coffee strainer with a little handle on it. That's what I'm going to use to dip the foam, at, foam out because it's not easy to get it out with a, a spoon. But I need to take the pot off of the stove and then remove as much foam as possible and I'll be ready to ladle this into my jars. Okay, that's the one minute timer there. Now I can take it off the stove. There really isn't a lot of foam, so I don't have to even worry about the foam. So now I'm going to turn this burner off, remove this lid. I've had my jars boiling to sanitize them, sterilize them. So now I'm going to just take these jars out and I'm going to ladle the juice into the jars.
and I need to leave a quarter inch head space. clean my jar off with paper towel and vinegar. return this to the water. Now this process is the open kettle water bath process and you can use any pot that will work for you. This is not being um, pressure canned. And I'm working too slow because this jelly is already trying to set up on me. This recipe calls for six jars, but I did put eight in there because sometimes I find myself with recipes being a little short on jars because it made more than what it was supposed to for some reason. So I just did two extra jars. And I may or may not have to use them. I think I'm going to have a lot of jelly left over. I should have prepared 10 jars, maybe more. I have a good bit of juice left in this pot. It's, it's not enough to do another batch, so I'm just going to fill up these larger jars here and refrigerate them. We will go through them quickly. almost tastes like grape, but it's better than grape. So this is going to come back up to a, a good boil, and once it does, once this comes up to a really good boil, that is a rapid boil, I'm gonna time it for five minutes. Since I'm going to refrigerate these two jars, I'm just gonna use these plastic lids instead of the metal lids. I'm gonna save those for actual uh, processing. 
The method I'm using is water bath canning. That's what you use for making jelly. And water bath is just open kettle. It does not have to be pressure canned. But I'm using this style pot. I didn't have one of those um, trays to put in the bottom of this that would fit. So I'm using this um, slotted thing. It has them raised up off of the bottom just a little bit. And the water can boil through all of this. And I have my water level one inch above the jars. I'm gonna put a lid on it and bring it to a rolling boil. Once it is at a rolling boil, then I will start a timer and I will process for five minutes. It's actually a pretty quick process. It's only one minute at a rolling boil in the first uh, stage of the jelly, which is adding the lemon juice and the sugar and then after you've added the pectin, it's one minute of a rolling boil, and then you're done basically. You're gonna ladle everything into the jars and process for five minutes. What takes the longest is bringing that original pot of water up to a full rolling boil. This jelly is so good. I can't wait to start using it. I'm gonna have toast every day. Y'all, if you have not tried black raspberry jelly, you're missing out. You really need to find some or make some and try it. And that in the store, if you find it, is not always the same. I have found some that was close, but it was not the same as the homemade jelly. By the way, I wanted to mention, I have no affiliation with them, but where I buy my um, berries from is Frank Farms in Michigan. Now they will ship that to you in a frozen state. I'm at the full rolling boil with my um, jelly jars, so now I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes and process. Time is up, so I've turned the burner off and I'm ready to take the jars out. I'm going to remove the jars from the heat for just a few minutes and then I'll take them out and set them on the counter. Now I'm going to take the jars out and put them on the counter and let them come to a, a natural cool down. And they're already popping. So that's it. I've got eight jars. It was supposed to make six. I don't know why it made eight. It actually made more actually because I did fill up one um, pint and not quite a, a half of another one. I don't know why that happens. Sometimes it does. I will end up with too little or too much, but I use the exact recipe and the exact measurements. Go figure. So that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you'll hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and share the video with others. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.